Good day to all our viewers. This is Row One TV, and today we'll be dealing with Croc One series. Croc One series, and by Croc One series, we're going to prepare our viewers towards the preparation of the state exams. In other countries, we call it Step One for medical students, actually, for medical students. So. Of course, there are some books already on the internet, or let me just say there are past questions which are already on the internet. But now there's been a twist or some twist of questions, which is now calling on us to start making videos for all our viewers who are watching or are following us, so they can be much or better prepared. So the book I'll be using is this one, uh, this one, yeah. Croc One General Medical Medical Training Collection of Tax for Preparing for Test Examination in Natural Sciences, written by many teachers. Most of them are in Bukomolet. So, basically, that's what I'll be dealing with. So, yeah, so I'll be dealing with. And for those who are new to Croc, I made this for you. Generally, generally there are about 200 questions. There are 200 questions uh, taken from nine different disciplines. Biology consisting of 17 questions, anatomy 25, histology 11, biochem 29, physiology 27, microbiology 13, part anatomy 31, part visio 25, and pharmacology 22. So, looking at this, the discipline with the highest number of questions is path anatomy. So today I'll be dealing with path anatomy. Path anatomy. Let's take a quick look, look at the marking scheme or the marking pattern. Minimum mark is 121 out of 200, which is approximately 60.5%. 60.5%. Total duration is 3 hours 20 minutes. Each correct answer carries one mark, no negative points for wrong answers, no credit given to questions that are unanswered, and not more, more than one answer will be considered as wrong. So take note, so take note. All right, so quickly, let's go to <coughs> this. If you don't have this book, I have put a soft copy in the description box. So please get it so you can follow us or you can follow me. Now, this is just preparing you. However, in your own time, try and go through every single question by yourself. Know why the answers are so or try and challenge yourself to answer them by all that you have studied from first to third course. Very, very good for you. So please uh, do that and uh, it will be good, yeah. All right, so part anatomy. Now, as an introduction, part anatom pathological anatomy is the study of the structural and functional changes in the cells, tissues, and organs that underlie diseases. This means that it studies one, the cause of disease, that is the etiology. Two, the mechanism of its development, pathogenesis. Three, the structural changes induced, that is the morphological what, changes. And lastly, the functional consequences of the morphological changes, also often known as the clinical significance. The clinical significance. Okay, so this book. It's recommended for our digestion because it arranges the questions according to topics, which I will try to explain each and every question. However, feel free to contribute anywhere possible. Don't forget, we are all learning. All right. So the first session is about dystrophies or degenerations. Now, in simple terms, a dystrophy is a disorder in which a cell 
an organ or tissue of the body waste away or it degenerates. So, parenchymatous degeneration. A parenchyma in animals is simply the functional part of an organ in the body. In plant, it is one of the three main types of ground tissue. I'm going to go into details with that. So now, let's answer the questions. This, that was just an introduction. So now the questions. Autopsy of a woman with severe intoxication caused by sepsis. Caused by sepsis, which was the direct cause of death, has shown a tiger heart. What is a tiger heart? A tiger heart is a fatty degenerated heart in which the fat is disposed in the form of broken stripes in the subendocardial myocardium. And there are four basic mechanisms of dystrophies or degenerations, which I'll come to that. But let's continue with the question. Microscopically, lipids are detected in the cytoplasm of cardiac histocyte. So the question is, what morphogenetic mechanism prevails in the development of these dystrophies? So, as I said earlier on, there are four basic mechanisms. One, we have infiltration. This occurs when there is redundant accumulation or deposition of metabolites into the cells and extracellular matrix. We also have decomposition, also known as phanerosis. It occurs when there is disintegration of membranous structures, membranous structures of cells and extracellular matrix. We also have perverted or unnatural synthesis. That's the synthesis of abnormal substances in the cells and tissues. Then lastly, but not the least, we have transformation which occurs due to the formation of one type of metabolism's product from common initial substances for proteins, fats, and carbohydrate. And carbohydrate. Please, if I'm too fast, that's just a video. Just rewind, play it again. Because due to time, I have to be fast because I want to cover large number of topics or yeah, I want to answer more questions for every single video that is being posted. So please, you can just rewind or go back and play it again. All right. So already, by element of or by method of elimination, we can eliminate answer E. Now, the cause of death was due to what? Sepsis. So that means severe intoxication was the direct cause of death. And by intoxication, it means destruction of what? Membranous substances or structures. Membranous structures. So our best answer is decomposition. Decomposition. So your answer is C. Answer is C. Decomposition. All right, question two. During the electron microscopic examination of liver biopsy, liver biopsy material, a great amount of flat cysteins and vesicles with secretory granules surrounded by membrane were found among numerous mitochondria. Mitochondria. The hyperplasia of what ultrastructure is meant. All right. Now, anytime you hear of ultra structure, the ultra structure of a cell mainly talks about organos. Organos. So the question here is what? What type of organo is being described here? So over here we have endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes, and Golgi complex. So starting from 
endoplasmic column. It consists of a series of membrane channels that is systems involved in synthesizing and transporting materials, mainly lipids needed by the cell. Lysosome. These are small membrane bound vesicles formed from rough endoplasmic reticulum containing a cocktail of digestive food enzymes. They are used to break down unwanted chemicals, toxins, organelles, or even the whole cell. The Ngoki complex or Ngoki apparatus. This consists of membrane bound flat sacs, also known as cysteins, with vesicles of secretory granules formed from endoplasmic reticulum. Its job is to transport proteins from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the cell membrane for export. So over here, our correct answer is Goki complex because it best describes what I've just said. All right. Question three. Autopsy of a 39-year-old man who was hospitalized with symptoms of hepatotropic intoxication and suddenly died has shown an enlarged liver of yellow-brown color and soft consistency. Drops of fat are noticed on the liver cut surface and on the scalpel. Microscopically, peripheral hepatocytes of classic liver lobules contain small drops that fill cytoplasm and push the nucleus to the periphery. What process in the liver do the following changes testify to? Now, symptoms of hepatotropic intoxication is simply symptoms of alcohol poisoning, which includes confusion, vomiting, seizures, slow breathing, irregular breathing, hypothermia, and so on and so forth. Since the cause of death is due to intoxication of the liver, storage diseases or enzymopathy can be eliminated. Secondly, the color changes of the yellow-brown with soft consistency, also called goose liver, and the pushing of the nucleus to the periphery of the cell due to the enlarged vacuoles are very typical for fatty degeneration of liver. So our correct answer here is fatty degeneration of liver liver question four autopsy of a 62 year old man whose death occurred against the background of progressive cardiac insufficiency has shown an enlarged heart of soft consistency its chambers are extended the myocardium is lacklustre agelaceous yellow on the cut from the okay from the endocardium side yellow white banding can't be seen most evident in papillary muscles what pathological process can be diagnosed now this is very typical for fatty degeneration of the liver or myocardium also known as tiger's heart Microscopically, the heart is enlarged, the chambers are stretched and flabby. Microscopically, we see dust-like vacuoles in the cardiomyocyte. It is observed in the papillary muscles and trabicles of the ventricles in the form of bands. So what's your correct answer? Of course, fatty generation of myocardium question five a solid gray patch with irregular gray patch white with irregular shape on even surface and clear borders was detected on the tank ventral surface of a man with dental prosthesis now prosthesis is simply an artificial body part on the lower jaw. 
During the historical study of the mass, there was noted the lymphomacrophage infiltration of subjacent connective tissue, preserved structure of the stratified pavement epithelium, is taken in due to prinkling in basal layers, hyperkeratosis and acanthosis, diagnose the illness. Over here we have what? Our clue here is solid grey what? Patch. Solid grey patch. But briefly, what is a condyloma? A condyloma refers to an infection of the genitals caused by human papilloma virus. A papilloma. A papilloma is a benign epithelium tumor growing outwardly projecting in nipple-like fronts. Or, in simple terms, it's a small what like growth on the skin or on the mucous membrane derived from the epidermis. Erythroplakia is a clinical term to describe any erythromatous or red area on a mucous membrane that cannot be attributed to any pathology. Leukoplakia, this is a condition in which thick white patches form on your tongue and the lining of the mouth usually associated with an increased risk of cancer now cancer in situ refers to an elderly an early stage cancer in which the cancerous growth is still confined to the site from which it started so with this explanation is clearly that our answer is Leukoplakia. So E is your best choice. All right. So now, next topic is mesenchyma degeneration. Mesenchyma degeneration. Now, mesenchyma degeneration develops in the connective tissue as a result of metabolic disturbances in it. Yeah. So, number six. A 66 year old patient had had peritonitis 10 years before his death. On the cut, the liver and the spleen capsules are much thickened here and there, packed and translucent. What is the most probable diagnosis? All right. Now, mesenchymal degenerations can be grouped into four. We have the mucoid swelling, the fibrinoid changes, hyaluronosis, and amyloidosis. Amyloidosis. Now, peritonitis is an inflammation of the peritoneum due to bacteria what infection. Now, let me explain what mucoid swelling is. Now, mucoid swelling. Uh, in mucoid swelling. Its processes are associated with swelling of collagen fibers, increased vascular what, permeability. So where there's increased vascular permeability and the swelling of collagen what, fibers. Microscopically, it shows metachromatia. The outcome is fibrinoid swelling. So if it's not treated, it moves to the next stage, which is fibrinoid what, swelling. Now, fibrinoid swelling or changes are formed due to main substance destruction and more increase in vascular what, permeability. Organs are enlarged a bit. Microscopically, bands of collagen fibers are homogeneous, impregnated with plasma proteins. Metachromatia is not marked. The outcome is necrosis, sometimes sclerosis or Hyalinosis. What then is hyalinosis? In Greek, hyalos means transparent or glass like. So take note transparent or glass like. It develops as a result of plasma infiltration, fibrinoid swelling, inflammation, necrosis, and sclerosis. That's how it develops. Is classified according to its localization. But because of time, we'll not go through that. So please take note of hyaluronosis. Now, amyloidosis. 
This is used to describe a group of diseases characterized by extracellular depo deposition of fibrillar proteinemia substances called amyloid. So when there is deposition of amyloid, it is called what? Amyloidosis. Of course, necrosis, we know what necrosis is. Premature death of cells in living tissue by autolysis. Now, from the question, cause of death is inflammation. The liver and the spleen capsules are also what thickened and translucent. Hence, the best answer is hyalinosis. Hyalinosis. All right. Number seven. Autopsy of a 40-year-old woman who was ill with rheumatoid arthritis and died has shown an enlarged solid spleen. Its tissue is of brown-red color with enlarged follicles that look like translucent grayish white grains. This is your guide. Translucent grayish white grains. What pathological process does the description what indicate? Now, this is actually talking about amyloidosis of spleen. Yes. And there are two patterns of amyloidosis of spleen. One, we have the sago spleen. It is characterized by translucent, pale, and waxy nodules resembling sago grains, and hence the name. Microscopically, the amyloid deposit begins in the walls of the arteries of the white pulp and may subsequently replace the follicles. The second form is called ladaceous spleen. This is characterized by map-like areas of amyloid. Microscopically, the deposit involves the walls of splenic sinuses and the small arteries and in the connective tissue of the red how? If you've done anatomy of spleen, then go back and read on it. Alright, so with this description, our best answer is what? Sarco spleen. The rest, leave them. Number eight. A 40-year-old man during 10 years after the tibia fracture had chronic osteomyelitis. In three years, accompanied by nephrotic syndrome. Mm -hmm. Uremia caused his death. So the cause of death is not even really about the fracture. It is what? Uremia. Uremia is simply the condition of having urea in the blood. It can also be defined as an excess of amino acid and protein metabolism and product. Now, autopsy has shown packed white kidneys with scars in the cortical layer. They have Sebaceous glue on the cut surface determined the pathology that had developed. Now, uremia is, of course, systemic amyloidosis of the kidney, but of a secondary etiology because urea came as a result of what? Osteomyelitis. So, it is what? Secondary. Now, so our answer here is what? Secondary amyloidosis. Don't forget uremia, proteins. I just said protein disturbances is called what? Amyloidosis. Mm -hmm. All right. So secondary or reactive amyloidosis occurs as a result of complication of chronic infectious or non-infectious inflammatory conditions associated with tissue what destruction now in primary amyloidosis it associates with plasma cell dyscariasis and contains al proteins because of time i can go through all those explanations however i've put a book in the description there go there and read on all these things so our correct answer is what is c Number nine, 
Autopsy of a 45-year-old man who died of sudden cardiac arrest has shown a symmetrical type of third stage obesity or stage 3 obesity. Right ventricular wall burst with uh, hemopericardium, excessive lipopexia under epicardium, microscopically adipose tissue from epicardium, penetrates myocardium with from all those things. See, don't stress yourself because this is fatty degenerations why it's occurring everywhere in the heart from the pericardium to epicardium to myocardium and finally atrophy so our correct answer is simply fatty heart fatty heart fatty heart it's not fatty degeneration of myocardium it's have been very very what specific way Papillary what muscles of the heart. Good. All right. So where are we? Where are we? Ooh, 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 ooh. Number ten. Where's my number ten? Okay. Okay. All right. Now, talk is about next dystrophies. Now, a patient with mitral valve insufficiency has a cough with rusty expectoration. Rusty expectoration. What pigment has determined this? Come on. We are looking for a pigment with higher content of iron, and that will account for the rusty word expectoration. So, the hemoglobin is an oxygen containing molecule that transport oxygen to the tissue. So obviously it's not the right answer. Melanin is a brown black pigment synthesized by melanocyte from tyrosine by its oxidation. Then we have what? Hemosiderin. This is an onion containing pigment formed from aggregate of ferritin. So our correct answer is what? Hemosiderin. That's it. Number 11. Cells with brown pigment were detected in the expectoration of a patient with mitral insufficiency. Pills test is positive. Anything they talk about pills test, they are talking about tests for, 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 to check the presence of what? Iron. So what pigment is it? The same thing. Hemosiderin. So the answer is what? E. It's E. Number 12. A patient with stomach ulcer with bleeding had a fluid of coffee ground color endoscopically detected. What pigment? What pigment are we talking about over here? Now, now we are talking about a pigment. <clears throat> that has what? A brown black what? Color. So what can you think of? Now, briefly, let me explain what a uh, hematin is because already you know most of them. So what is hematin? Hematin is a brown black pigment derived from hemoglobin and has two types. We have chloric hematin and then we have hemomelanin. Now, chloric hematin, this is formed in gastric erosions, gastric erosions and ulcers due to interactions between the hemoglobin and the gastric what excretion now we also have hemomelanin this is a brown pigment produced by malaria parasite from hemoglobin is taken up by monocytes in the blood and subsequently deposited in the liver and spleen so our best choice will be what hematin chloride because it's very specific gastric erosions and ulcers due to interaction between what hemoglobin and gastric excretions. Now, stomach ulcer, bleeding. My brother, my sister, please. Answer is B. Terrine. Oh yeah, man, this has come. A patient with secondary syphilis has focuses of the black upper part skin depigmentation depigmentation hmm. 
name the pathological process of the skin. Now, anytime there is deep pigmentation, it means there are what white patches, white, white, white patches. Now this is happening what on the skin. So white patches on the skin is called, of course, leukoderma, not leukoplakia. Leukoplakia is very found on the, on the mucous surfaces, but this is happening on the dermis, on the skin, on the skin. On the skin, on the skin. All right. Oh, that's staring. Now, for the sake of learning, dysplasia is simply the presence of cells of abnormal type within a tissue. For normal type within the tissue, metaplasia is simply the abnormal change. The abnormal change. In the nature of a tissue that means from one to another parakeratosis is a mode of keratinization characterized by retention of nuclei in the stratum corneum all right so basically that is it so our answer is d 14 the skin of a patient with bilateral affliction of adrenal glands became deep brown. Pearl's test is negative. That means there's no iron. What pigment determines the color of the skin? Come on, they give me a clue. A pigment, of course, melanin. Melanin. 15. A 70 year old man complains of articular pain in his hands and feet. Joints are mishappen, painful, an increased level of urate in blood and urine was detected. The metabolic disease of what substance is made? Urate is what? Talking about what? Proteins, 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 proteins. So what is your answer? Of course, nucleoproteins, nucleoproteins. Don't forget, uric acid comes from what? Purine nucleotide, purine nucleotide. And purine is and if you nuclear proteins. Number 16. Autopsy of a woman who had chronic shigellosis has shown amorphous deposit of violet color in myocardial and renal stroma and parenchyma, mucous coat of stomach, and in the connective tissue of lungs, stained by blah 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 blah. Cause reaction is what? Positive. What pathological process has developed? All right. Now this is talking about calcification. Calcium, calcification. Now dystrophic calcification refers to microscopic deposition of calcium salt in injured tissues and does not simply reflect on accumulation of calcium derived from the bodies of dead cells. You see, metastatic calcification. It reflects deranged calcium metabolism associated with increased serum calcium concentration. It precipitates in different organs like lungs, gastric mucosa, kidneys, myocardium, arterial walls, and so on. Look at this. Typically for what? Of course, metastatic calcification. There are two main, dystrophic and metastatic. So these ones are just to confuse you. Put them aside. Okay. 16, sorry, 17. Oh, necrosis. Necrosis, one of the toughest though. Necrosis. Now, let me just explain before I get into the questions. Now, necrosis is a cellular death in the living body by autolysis. Types of necrosis, necrosis according to morphological features, include coagulative necrosis, 
to take note coagulative necrosis that is it is associated with inhibition of lytic enzymes its early stages are pale firm and slightly swollen progression leads to more yellowish softer and shrinking cells the outlines are relatively preserved okay so you can see it nuclear disappear and the acidified cytoplasm becomes what is xenophilic waxy or zincous necrosis of the muscles may occur at typical fever so when there is a sorry at a typhoid fever so when there's a typhoid fever you get what coagulative kind of what necrosis but it has a specific name called zincous necrosis two another type of necrosis is liquefactive or colliquative necrosis colliquative necrosis it is marked by the solution of tissue due to enzymatic lysis of dead cells the first one there's no lytic enzymes this one there is a lytic what enzymes it occurs in what prolonged inflammation so when there's a prolonged inflammation it comes liquefied tissue is soft diffluent and composed of disintegrated cells and fluid we also have gangrene gangrene develops in organs and tissues having contact with the environment it has three forms we have dry wet and gas it mostly mostly occurs in the lower extremities uterus and even the lungs another form is infarction of course it means ischemia we have caseous this has features of both coagulative and liquefactive and it occurs in the center of tuberculous granuloma we also have fibrinoid fibrinoid necrosis it is characterized by deposition of fibrin like material fibrin like materials then we have this one called segesta this is a fragment of dead tissue which cannot be destroyed replaced it cannot and it is usually a complication of osteomyelitis take note it is a complication of osteomyelitis it is not here it is not in this question i mean in this option but it's called segesta 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 all right so back to the question autopsy of a man who died of typhoid fever come on has shown that rectus muscles of the anterior abdominal wall are packed white and look like steric candle what particular process is it of course this is a type of what coagulative necrosis to be specific zincus necrosis because of the presence of what typhoid fever no need to stretch yourself 18 a patient with pancreatic diabetes has sharp pain in the right foot lower extremity means what mm -hmm. gangrene exactly the tongue is black the tissues are edematous focal edemata detachment and Melodorous discharge are also detected. What clinical pathologic form? Of course, we know it's a gangrene, but I told you there are what three types: moist, dry, and what and gas. So what is it? They say there is what discharge to give you a clue of what moist gangrene, moist gangrene. Nineteen, physical examination of a six-year-old girl. Who had measles showed the showed that soft tissues of cheeks had indistinctly outlined, indistinctly outlined at the matos patient's district. Name the complication of the measles. Complication of the measles. We are talking about gangrene again. Or oh, gangrene again. And this time around is what? moist so you see your answer is what well. see all right now for the benefit of studies let me just explain these two of course you know these three uh decubitus ulcer and trophic ulcer 
Now, the cubitus ulcer are simply pressure ulcers with localized damage to the skin over a bony prominence due to pressure. So this is, as a result, there's an ulcer due to the presence of what pressure. Then we have trophic ulcer. It is also known as malum perforance. Malum perforance. It has long lasting painless ulcer that penetrates deep into the skin. So it is painless, but it is just, you know, cutting in to the wound, to the skin, just like that. All right. Now, number 20. During the examination of the femoral bone, a chronic superative compact substance and marrow inflammation, segestra mass formation were detected. What disease causes it? I told you, segestra occurs due to a complication called, of course, osteomyelitis. Number 20, please. D. All right, 21. An aged person had an infarction of the right hemis. Infarction means what? Inadequate or insufficiency of blood supply. Now, in a year, has the person had in a year as the person had immobility of left limbs, CT was made. In the right hemisphere, there was detected a cavity filled with liquor. Okay, with unstrated walls. What pathological process was detected in the brain? Of course. This should be what? Now, look at this. In the right hemisphere, they were detected what? A cavity field. Anytime you hear of a cavity field, we are talking about what? Cyst formation. But what is the leading mechanism or what causes it? It's what? Infarction. So this is what? Post-infarction what? Cyst. Simple as that. Number 22. Mm. 22. Now, we are moving to another topic, circulatory disturbances. Now, hemorrhagic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, bleeding, caused cerebral cyst of a patient. In two years, he died of post-influenza virus pneumonia. Autopsy has shown a cerebral cavity with walls of rusty pill color. Pill test is positive. I told you, pill test is for what? Iron. So what process in the cyst wall is detected? Of course. Your answer is what? Hemosiderosis. Don't forget. Rust, TP, pilters, hemosiderosis. All right, so let's move. 23. It's local. It's not in the brain. 23. A patient who had ischemic disease and recurrent myocardial infarction died because of progressive cardiovascular collapse. Oh, autopsy has shown an enlarged solid spleen of tac. This is your guy. Tac cherry color on the cut surface. Microscopically, pulp sclerosis and follicles atrophy were detected. What term can we use to describe this? Now when there's now when the spleen is deeply congested, you see my god in fashion is king now. So that means that the spleen was what congested. Now it becomes tense and cyanotic. So we call it cyanotic what in duration. Now when you cut it, you can see a gray tank or color cherry color. Gray tank or dark cherry color. So the cyanotic integration is actually what shows this sort of color. So this chronic venous congestion occurs in the right heart failure and in portal hypertension from cirrhosis of the liver. Now, when this congestion occurs in the liver, it is called what nutmeg liver. Of course, that's how I to the nutmeg liver. So it is called what nutmeg. Is it happening in the liver? We have called what nutmeg. But this is happening in the spleen. So we call it what cyanotic induration of the spleen. Cyanotic induration of the spleen. All right, 24. Autopsy of a dead 86 year old man who had cerebral atherosclerosis has shown the atrophy of cerebral cortex. 
Don't forget, atrophy means what? Decrease in size. And cells. Size and cells. Mm -hmm. Size. What am I saying? Decrease in the number and size of cells. <laughs> Name the atrophy by its cause. There's what? Atherosclerosis. What does atherosclerosis does? Atherosclerosis will block the flow of blood. So if it blocks the flow of blood, what is it leading to? Insufficiency of blood supply. So your answer is B. 25. Autopsy of a dead 48-year-old man has shown the thrombus obturation of the middle cerebral artery lumen. Come on. Thrombus means blockage. Thrombus meaning a stone or something. I mean, substance. I mean, a clot inside. So this word, obstruction. The periotemporal part of the left hemisphere has a focus of gray puppy consistency. What is the most plausible reason for such changes? 25. Of course. Let's look at the options. Don't forget there's blockage. So 25 are the answers. You can come here. Okay. So blockage. Leading to what? Insufficiency blood flow. That is called what? Infection. So your answer is what? E. Infection. 26. Autopsy has shown a cavity of irregular shape filled with red crumbs and macerated cerebral tissue in the right hemisphere subcortex nuclei. What pathology developed in this case? My brother, my sister, this is what? Hematoma. That hematoma. It's not cyst, but what a hematoma. Mm -hmm. Because there is a, a cavity which contains what blood. That is cyst. So that is hematoma. Mm. 27. A 29-year-old man who had a multifragmental fracture of the right femur on the third day after the trauma complaint of pain in the right half of the chest, heavy breathing. In a day, he died because of progressive heart, progressive heart respiratory failure. Histological examination detected uh, sudanophilic orange drops in pulmonary and cerebral vessels. Vessels that completely close the lumen of microcirculatory vessels. What complication caused the death of the man? Hmm. This is look at this. There's what fragment. Mm -hmm. Now, in there is sorry, there is a fracture. Now, anytime you hear of fracture leading to blockage of something, we are talking about what embolism. Embolism. What is embolism? Embolism is the passage of blood clot, that is thrombus, or fat bone, or fat, which is bone, air or gas, or foreign substances in the blood vessels. Now with history, in this question, of multifragmental fracture, the type of embolism that closed the lumen of the microcirculatory vessels is what? Fat embolism. Is fat embolism. 28. During her histological examination of a pilot, you're in the air, who died after depressurization of a plane cabin. You see, air or gas, let me just say gas. There was detected a great amount of vesicles in the vessels of the internal organs, fatty hepatosis, and multiple small ischemic gray, blah blah blah. Softening focuses in the cerebrum and spinal cord. Select the most possible reason, of course, gaseous embolism. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. We spent a lot of time here, so we'll go for break and we'll continue later. Please. If you've not subscribed to this channel, kindly do so. So you'll be the first to be notified anytime good information like this is being posted there. 
and please go to the description box i've sent a lot of link or i'm sending i've put a lot of links to the soft copy of this book that i'm using and even the material that i'm using to even explain these things there are so many notes that you need to read please take them and read them it's for your own good all right see you bye